Hello, Internet friends. Dwayne here. Today, we're going to take a look at providing inbound access to our NC2 cluster in Azure without the need of providing floating IPs. By default, the routed path out to the rest of the world from your NC2 cluster is through a NAT. If you need inbound access for your workloads, then they have to provide a floating IP. Uh, if you have hundreds of workloads that need inbound access, this may be uh, kind of a tedious configuration. So one way to do that is to provide a non-natted path to your application sitting on your Nutanix cluster. So we're going to take a look today at the Prism Central configuration. Let's dive in. So logged in to Prism Central in Azure, we have our registered cluster. We want to create a non-natted path out to Azure. And so also Azure workloads can come into the cluster. So we go to virtual private clouds under network and security. Here we see three VPCs. The transit VPC is the one that is automatically created. It's tied to this point-to-point -point external subnet, which is really just a, a NIC tied to the flow gateway external NIC. And so we see that we already have an external runnable IP address already configured. So that would be um, one of the first steps would be to go into our transit VPC and update this field here. So we already have a large prefix, which we can carve up for our user VPCs. This is the same prefix that will go on the Azure side in a user defined route, which we'll show later. Uh, we'll hit cancel here. And then we want to create uh, an additional subnet. Um, so out of the box, we get this natted overlay subnet. And we can see here the 50 IPs that are created for our environment for floating IPs and to be handed out for uh, source side NATs for VPCs. And then we have our no NAT, which I've already pre-created. Uh, this range just needs to not have any overlap on the Azure side. And so, you know, if you're creating multiple uh, VPCs, user VPCs, you really just need to account for those IPs as far as how big you want your DHCP scope to be done. And so now if we, once that is all set up on the transit VPC, we're going to use this uh, test drive DR um, subnet. So this is a user created subnet. We would go update. We would then add in our no NAT. So you can have a NAT and a non NATed path or external subnets. And then we are putting a subset. So we're just doing uh, a small subset of that range from our transit VPC. And so then when we add subnets, for this VPC, we're just going to use that address space. So if we go into subnets, we have our subnet for testing this external routable address space. So if we have our range and uh, we're, we're good to go there. So after you create this subnet, you do need to add a route. So on within the VPC. So this is, so this one we've already pre-created. So there's no default route to go out to, to the NAT. So that's one that's one path. But we've added this path here. So for any traffic going to 10.79.4 slash 24, we're going to go out to the non-natted path. Um, so that is our configuration for the Prism Central side. If we go look at our virtual machines that we have running, we have this uh, SQL server here with uh, 2020.1.40. So it's sitting in that address space. And now we're going to take a look at the needed Azure configuration. So in our Azure portal, we have this ERP test, which is a native Azure virtual machine. We also see listed here our Flow Gateway, which has been deployed. So uh, we take a look at our virtual machine. So 10.79.4.4, it's sitting in that subnet that we want to route through our non-natted path. So we don't have to use floating IPs. Um, so that's the subnet that we're going to use. 
And then the next step that we'd have to do um, is to make sure that prefix is going to be sent to our flow gateway VM. So if we click on our flow gateway VM and we take a look at the external NIC. Um, so here's our external IP of our gateway. If we click on networking, we can make sure that's correct. So here's our external and the internal NIC. So we are highlighted on the external NIC. So that's the IP of our appliance that we want to direct traffic to. So now that we know those pieces of information, we can go um, to routes. Uh, so here is the route table that we've already created. So you'd create a new route table as the default will not give you the ability to add it. So you create a new route table for any of your subnets that you want to route this way and then you'll add them to the route table. So here we've added a route, which is our prefix. And the next hop is going to be our virtual appliance. And this is the, the IP address from our external NIC. Um, so once that is set up, um, we're in a good spot. Now we can log into that virtual machine and see if we can't hit our SQL server sitting on our cluster. So here we're logged into our native Azure virtual machine 10.79.4.4 and we've already had a continuous ping going to our SQL server. So it is going over the uh, non-natted path uh, through our flow gateway VM. Now, as far as other troubleshooting items that may occur, keep in mind the flow gateway VM has a network security group and so does the native Azure resource. So those are things that you may have to adjust to allow traffic through. So here with our native Azure virtual machine, if we click on the virtual machine, go to networking, um, you will see the, the inbound rules that you'd have to change. So here uh, on the outbound, we're just making sure that we're allowing the ICMP to go out. Um, so that's you know one thing beyond what we've covered today that you might have to address in making this work. So now your workloads have two options for providing network access. They can go through a natted path, which can provide a floating IP if they need direct inbound access, or they can go the non-natted path, which we just set up to provide inbound and outbound access to your workloads running on your NC2 cluster in Azure. See you in the next video.